And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Trismegistus, this, this, Trismegistus, Trismegistus. I don't know. This is the, these names of these games seem to get harder for me all the time. But I was really excited about this one because the designers of this one are the same folks who made Lorenzo Il Magnifico, which is a game I really adore. Uh, Tassini is just, I think his stuff is phenomenal. And I know that his games don't have a super strong theme, but have lots of cool ways to get points. And I've enjoyed them. I heard that this one was a more complex one along the way. But who cares? I'm certainly willing to give this one a whirl and try it out. Even if I can't pronounce the name, I definitely know how to play the game. Here's how it is. Now, I'm not going to be able to go over every detail of this game. I just want to give you some sort of idea of how the game works. The game, as in many games, is trying to get the most points. And one of the main ways of getting points is to do experiments. Now, everybody is going to have a starting experiment um, and then some masterpiece experiment. These experiments are going to need various ingredients to do them, and they're going to require you to be at a certain height on one of these four tracks. And at the beginning, you're at zero. So you're going to need to move up those tracks and do that. And then you're going to get victory points and other benefits. Like, for example, this one will give you three victory points, and you get to move up on any track of your choice and then move up one on the wind track. This one here is going to give you 18 points and also you're going to get a bonus card, which is another main way to get points in this game. At the end of the game, you're going to look at all the experiments that you've done and all of these tokens that you have and you're going to count up the symbols on them. And if you have that many symbols on these cards, so for example, if I have three air tokens, then I'm going to get bonus victory points. This one, two for every mountain symbol I have. If I have two fire and two mountains, I'll get one for how high I am on these two tracks. These are two of the main ways to get points is by completing experiments and these end game victory condition cards. The dice are the main mechanism here. At the beginning of each of the three eras, you're going to roll all these dice. The dice have all the same six sides. They're just different colors, red, white, and black. And you're going to place them on the bowls. And if you have more than five of a bowl, you'll just re-roll them. So there will only be five or less of them. When it's your turn, you're going to pick one of these dice, and you can pick one from any bowl that you want. The number of dice there matters. Um, the symbol also matters in the middle here. If you pick this symbol, the one with the infinity, you can change that to any side you want. So let's say I take this symbol here, and there was four dice. I will then go to my player board, placing that here on the four. I'm going to be able to use this dice four times. Now, if you have any of these tokens, and you'll be able to get these over the course of the game, you can spend those. So I could spend one of those and turn that into a five. Now, on my turn, I'm going to use this die to take an action. Sometimes it will move one time, sometimes it will move more than that. Once it gets to zero, it will then lock in. And then I'll pick another die. When all three of my dice are locked in, I'm done with turns for that era. You also have these lightning bolts here, these, these tokens. You can spend one of these on someone else's turn. So let's say someone else has this white die on their board and they use it for whatever they use it for. I can use either the symbol or the color of the die to do an action by flipping over these lightning bolts. Some of the various actions are taking a new experiment. There's going to be level one experiments at the beginning of the game. Level twos will show up at level threes in the third era. And you just take an experiment, but you have to use a die that matches the symbol on the book where the experiment is. You can also use these dice to get elements. The elements you can get are ethers, and there's some ethers up here. You can see the different tokens here. And the ether that you get is on the board corresponding to the, t the dice that you have. 
Um, this die here in particular can take any of the four ethers. Or you can take materials. On your player board you'll have these yellow cubes showing that you have these materials. And so you can take materials. Now incidentally mercury here, this one is both a material and an essence for the purpose of the game. But you're, you're going to get unrefined materials. That's going to be down in these round ones here. And then there's refined materials and then you can even have even super refined with silver and gold here. Now the way that you are going to get these materials is one of the main parts of this game. This is going to be done through transmutation. Now when you do use transmutation as an action, you're going to be using the color of the die, not the symbol, as we've been using for actions that have, you've already seen. When you transmutate, you're going to take an element and move it following one of these lines here, but the color is going to matter. So if I have black, I can transmute this one here following the arrows up to there. So you need to use a die to transmute it, but you also need to use an essence. You can use any of these three tokens, or again, you can spend a mercury as an essence. Whichever essence you use, you're going to move up on that particular track. And that is the main way to move up on these tracks. So if you're going to transmute multiple things from the same spot to the same spot here, you can do that, but you're going to need to spend an essence for each one that you do. If your transmutation passes by an artifact, and each player will have a starting artifact, and as the game goes by, you can spend three of the same color die to take an artifact from the white, red, or black section. And these artifacts are going to let you do all kinds of cool things. So when I move by here, for example, I get two mercury. I will then turn this over and it will refresh at the end of a round. There's other ways to refresh it too. And so if you get artifacts and have them stuck up in these areas, I can transmute here. Now I get a mercury and I can move up one on an additional track and artifacts will let you do some cool combos. Now as I said, the main goal of this game is to complete these experiments. And when you complete an experiment, you're going to need to spend the different ingredients that are shown here at the top of the experiment. Although happily, if you have any gold, you can substitute gold. It's a wild and can be anything. You're also going to need to be at this height on a track to complete the experiment, but you can spend silver to reduce that number. If you do all that though, then you'll get these bonus points and you get the things here on the bottom. Not only that though, the first time you complete an experiment, you're going to stick it here under the top of the board. And you're going to do that with all your experiments that you complete. And it's going to give you one of these bonus tiles here. Now this bonus tile is something you can spend over the course of the game. And each character has a set of eight bonus tiles that are put up there. And I'm, uh, this one will give me three, uh, three materials of my choice, uh, unrefined materials of my choice. I'm also going to put that somewhere in this little grid here. Now this also is going to reduce the cost of future ones. I can now pay one less resource to do future fire experiments. To get the other one, the first one you can get from here, you can spend a gold to take the other one, although to take one of these or to take one of these or to take one of these, you would have to spend two gold, then three gold, then four gold for each successive one. And completing an experiment of each one lets you take one of these. But as you take these, you're going to put them down here where you can flip them over and use them. But also when you complete a whole row or column, you will get the bonuses on both of them. This one gives me two silver and lets me move up on three different tracks, which is pretty awesome. And I would like to, you know, do this one. I get three uh, materials materials and I move up one on the air track and one on any track. And then if I put one here, I get all that and I eventually will get this and this and there's, there's all kinds of cool things that you can do. Getting all of them out on the board will be pretty expensive though because gold is not so easy to come by. That's pretty much the whole game. You're going to get some more things as you move up on these tracks, as you move past these tokens, you'll get bonuses. And the farther up on the tracks you move, you'll get points. And yeah, you're going to try to get more artifacts and more spells. And between eras, you'll reroll the dice and you'll be adding more level two spells. And then in the third one, the level ones go away and we add level three spells. And the artifacts change. The artifacts get much better as time goes by. And you can even get more of these light bolts that you can spend on other people's turn and at the end of the game whoever has the most points is the winner now I'm gonna have to say that for this game the components are functional I like the dice it's easy to tell the colors apart not so easy to tell the symbols apart at a glance 
I just had a hard time with it. And even after multiple plays, these two dice, for example, um, uh, these two symbols, they don't look that dramatically different, the two white ones here. They just, they look pretty similar. One looks like a two with a line through it, and one looks like a five through a line with it. Then we have the symbols on the board, and I can never remember which essence goes with which die. And it's all there, right? But it is kind of a mess. I was also a little disappointed. For as cool as these spells are, why are they all the exact same picture? I felt like they could have put some more artwork in. The board is simultaneously busy and yet spartan at the same time. Uh, the player boards themselves, I do like that they're double layered and that you can put these these fit right inside there. That's cool. Following the arrows makes sense once you understand it, although it is a bit to get you know underneath it. There's a weird thing here. We got green, red, and blue. Then there's a yellow row, and then that's the row you put the black cards. That wasn't clear from the book, but the cards are good quality. Once you understand the symbology, honestly, I didn't have to look it up very often. I thought I would more so. But do be prepared. There is a ton of pieces in this game. Whew. This one is a bit of a bear to get into. Now, it says 90 minutes to 120 minutes on here. And the, my first playthrough, I was like, yeah, right. That's pretty accurate, actually. It's about a two-hour game. But there is a lot going on. Now, weirdly enough, I mentioned that their games often have no theme. Like Lorenzo Il, Il Magnifico, I have no idea what the theme of that game is. In this game, the theme is alchemy, and it's pretty clear, actually. You are taking ingredients, you are running them through transmutation, using essences to do so. The theming makes sense, and yeah, I think they could have actually sacrificed a bit of a theme. Having things like mercury as an essence and a material, and then this and that, and then all the names of all the different materials, and it's like, oh, and them using actual, you know, alchemist symbols on the stuff. Just, I thought, almost diluted from the experience. I was just kind of like, whoa, I'm not actually trying to be an alchemist here. I just want to play this game. This is a game that, once you understand how it works, is not that complex. On your turn, you move a die, take one of the four or five actions that are possible, and then uh, you go, is anyone else going to use their lightning bolt? No? Okay. Then next person's turn, and so on and so forth. You don't have many, you don't have many actions. You know, your first die is probably going to be a four or five. The next die, there's fewer dice in the middle, is going to be a three, maybe. The next die might be a two or a one. I don't, you might get those tokens that you can move it up. So you only have so many actions over this game. You got to make them count. And as the game goes by, you start realizing at the beginning, you start transmutating stuff. Sometimes, not because you even want the refined materials, but just because you need to move up on those tracks so you can do your experiments. You want to get your starting experiment done as quickly as you can. Incidentally, at the beginning of the game, you are picking both one of the scientists, who are not symmetrical, they have different uh, tiles. You're picking your starting spell, you're picking your starting artifact and all that. That is overwhelming choices. However, happily, the book says if you never played before, take this, 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 and this. Thank you. That makes it a whole lot easier and I highly recommend that for your first game. But this game has a, a huge amount of just crunchiness going in as you sit there and try to do things and as time goes by, you start feeling like, wow, I'm starting to make these cool combos. I transmutated this and used my artifact and got this and then I did this and then I unflipped the artifact and I transmutated again and then do this and now I did this experiment which is going to give me this and this and this which that sets me up to do this experiment and that feels fun. It is definitely for me, the headiest game these guys have designed. And, I, and again, well, maybe Barrage, but uh, other than that Barrage, this is definitely a heady game, and it takes at least a game for you really to like, rock the whole systems going on in it. And I think a little bit of streamlining would have probably made me like it even more. As it is, I'm very impressed with the game. But I don't know how often I'm going to want to play it because when I'm done, I feel like my mind has a rag that has just been wrung out. And I'm like, whoa, okay. I, you get it, right? But first time player against someone who's played before, ha, 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 fun. And that's the mark of a game of deep strategy. I mean, if you think about it, there's not a ton of luck in the game. The luck is the dice that are rolled and then the order that the artifacts and experiments come up. All the other choices are up to you. You're going to decide what ingredients to take. You're going to decide how to use the dice to get to where you need to be. And in a sense, in many ways, you're making your own luck. There's a lot of moving pieces in this game, but it all comes down to do you understand the transmutation process? 
When do you spend your gold? That seems like a minor thing, but that's a pretty big deal because you want to use gold to unlock those tiles, but you also want to use gold to fill in the spots on your experiments. It's definitely a game that as each time I played it, I felt like I was improving, like I'm getting better at it. So just a solidly cool game that once again, I can't pronounce, has a theme that's pretty strong actually, but also obscures a little bit. Like I said, not a perfect game, a little rough around the edges, but one I think a lot of folks are gonna enjoy. Dice Tower Judgment, approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.